the Lord, the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, Jehovah, the man of war, the Lord that inhabits the Shekinah glory, the Lord and God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord. The earth declares your glory. Father, you are the King of glory. We have come today even to sit and learn at your feet. Father, speak to us. Let your word open our eyes. Let your word instruct us. Glorify your name, O Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Once again, we say Happy New Year to everyone, wherever you are, watching us all over the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Even my dressing is different today. I'm also dressed in splendor and glory in the season that we are celebrating. God will grant you all a wonderful year, a beautiful year, a fruitful year in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is our first Tuesday in the year. We are beginning a new series. It's entitled The Year of of the glory of God. That is what we are having this year. And uh, today's study is entitled The Glory, the Presence, and the Power of God. The Glory, the Presence, and the Power of God. Let's begin by looking at Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14. Habakkuk 2 verse 14. There God gives an indication of what he has in mind when he was talking about uh, his glory. So we will look at Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14. It tells us something interesting. It says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. God is very particular about his glory. God is very conscious of his glory. And also, we see in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. Isaiah 6, 1 to 4. There is something there also very before. Then let's see Isaiah 42, verse 8. Isaiah, let's start from Isaiah 42, 8. That one tells us, I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. So the question is, what is the glory of God? What does it mean when we say glory of God? What does the glory of God mean? There are some words that are very difficult to define. Glory is one of them. It's easier to define power. It's easier to define shame. It's easier to define some other words. But glory is not so easy. But let me try. Glory of God is the manifestation of his holiness. Glory of God is the public manifestation of his holiness. The glory of God is the infinite beauty and greatness of God's manifold perfection. It's the manifestation of the character and the worth of his attributes. You see, let me try and explain a little we know God is a spirit. Because he's a spirit, we cannot see him. But the Bible tells us that there is a light that covers him. There is a light that to approach him, you first see that light. It's so bright. It's indescribable. That light is awesome. That light is overwhelming. No human being can see that light and live. That light is what is described as the glory of God. It shows, it's a cover, is what is the nearest we can see of his qualities, of his greatness, of his majesty, of his splendor. So, glory of God is like the cover. So, by the time you are seeing his glory, you know you are there where he is because his glory covers him. His glory shields him. His glory is the express manifestation of his presence. I pray that even as we go on, 
uh, we will learn more about the glory of God. For example, in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 4, Isaiah had an encounter. Let's quickly see. In the year that King Uzziah died, I, that is Isaiah, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain, they covered their face. Nobody can look at the glory of God. Even his cherubims and seraphims, they cover their faces. With two, they covered their feet because they are in the presence of his glory. And with two, they fly. Let's see verse 3. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Holiness is the nature of God. That nature that comes from him is as a cover. The cover is the light. That light is the glory. So the glory covers his holiness. It covers his essence. His infinite, innate personality is covered by the light. That light is the glory. That is the closest I think I can go as a human being. Now, we started by saying we are looking at glory, we are looking at presence, and we are also looking at power of God. The three are closely related, but they are not the same thing. It is possible to have the power of God in a place and not have his presence there or have his glory there. Someone can chase the power of God. Someone can get the power of God without having the presence of God, without carrying a part of his presence. You may go around with his power. You may do things using power of God, but God is not with you. It's just his power that is there. A man may be absent from the presence of God for a whole year. Himself and God, they've not been seen. But he's still carrying power. The power of God is still with him. He can still lay hands on people. And the people will fall under the power. But the fact that power is there does not mean presence of God is there. I'm sure we all remember. In 1 Kings chapter 19. When Elijah was to have an encounter with God, the Bible tells us there was a great and strong wind. God was not there. There was heavy earthquake, fire, noise, etc. God was not there. You can see power of God. You can hear shakings, but the presence of God may still not be there. You can have the power of God without remaining in good relationship with God. However, the presence of God, it gives us a true picture of your current relationship with God. Someone that doesn't have a good relationship with God cannot remain in the presence of God. You cannot be living a life of sin and continue in the presence of God. Because God is so holy that he cannot behold iniquity. He will drive you away. Is either you drive the sin away and remain, or he drives you and your sinful nature away. From Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it tells us you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So we see that power of God can be received. It's a gift. Anybody can receive power of God. Anybody can carry power of God. But the presence of God, the glory of God, is not the same thing. It is different. The presence is not a gift. You pay a price for the presence of God. Let us see, for example, Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4. It says, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? That is, who can stand into the presence of God? Who shall stand in his holy place? Verse 4 gives us an idea. He says, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, and who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. This gives us an idea of how we can remain in the presence of God. When you see a man who constantly goes to the presence of God, who is constantly dwelling in the presence of God, you will know the difference. 
Many people demonstrate the power of God, but not his presence, and definitely not his glory. Because, as we shall see soon, even his presence is different from his glory. The three can be separated. No mortal being can experience the presence and the glory of God and remain the same. No matter how hardened that person may be. In fact, God told Moses, as we shall see soon, that no living human being can see the glory of God and remain alive. When the glory and the presence of God lives a man, you will know, even though that man himself may not know. That is why in Judges chapter 16, verse 20, Judges 16, 20, we read concerning Samson that the power of God had left Samson. But Samson did not know. That we can find in Judges 16, verse 20. The Holy Spirit had left him, but he didn't know. Now, Psalm 1, verse 3. Psalm 1, verse 3 it gives us an idea of one of the characteristics of a person that dwells in the presence of God. He says, that person will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That person will be fresh all the time. The person will be bringing forth his fruit in due season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. This is not financial prosperity. I'm not talking about dollars and naira now. No. For example, God was with Joseph. Though Joseph was in the prison, Joseph physically was suffering. Joseph physically was poor. Joseph physically was deprived. But the presence of God was with him. And because the presence of God was with him, it showed. The head of the prison could see that this person he carries the presence of God. Potiphar could see when he got to Potiphar's house, even though he was a slave. So you don't judge. The fact that someone has a million dollars or he has 200 luxurious cars does not mean that he has the presence of God. Anybody can have money. Anybody can carry power. But not everybody can carry the glory or the presence of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. May we never lose the presence of the glory or the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, being prayerful, the fact that someone prays a lot does not mean the person carries the presence of God. They are different. Prayer brings power, not necessarily the presence. Worship can bring the presence of God. Because you see, Prayer is attended to by angels. Angels, they carry the power of God. They demonstrate the power of God. But worship, God comes himself to take our worship. Jesus teaching us in John chapter 4. He said, God is a spirit. He says, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He says, the hour is and now it, the hour comes and now is. When true worshippers, that God seeks those who are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. So, if you want to carry presence of God, be a worshipper. Be a sincere worshipper of God. Now, let's draw a physical analogy. For those who live in Nigeria, the electrical company is called PHCN, Power Holding Company. Power Holding Company owns electricity and they transmit it. Electricity in my house shows there is power from them. But it doesn't mean the company is in my house. It doesn't even mean their staff are in my house. So, God, the source of all power, is like the company that generates electricity. He doesn't need to come to you before his power comes to you. He can send his power to you. He can send his gift to you, but he may not come to your house. So, the fact that someone carries power of God doesn't mean that the presence of God is with him. Many times, we have wrongly called the power of God or the anointing of God 
We have called it the presence of God. No. The three can be separated. We remember the story of Elisha's dead body that raised another dead body. The power of God, the anointing of God was still in the bones of Elisha, even though the presence of God was not there. So the presence of God can be separated from the power of God. The power of God was still remaining in the, 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 the dry bones of Elisha. That power could still raise another dead, but God's presence was not there. God operates in three dimensions. We have God the Father, is also God love, is also consuming fire. Jesus also operates in three dimensions. You have Jesus as lamb, you have Jesus as shepherd, you also have Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah. These three dimensions, they are different. The lion is different from the shepherd. The shepherd is different from the sheep. So, God too operates in three different dimensions. And we can separate them. You see, God's anointing or God's power is one dimension. The presence of God is another dimension. And now, the glory of God, which is the ultimate, is a third dimension. There is a story we'll be rounding up with from the Bible, which shows us the clear separation of the power, the presence, and the glory of God. We see this from Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 to 20. It's an encounter that Moses had with God. You see, many times... Moses had encountered God. He has had the presence of God, but he didn't have the glory of God. Because as we will see in their discussion, the glory of God is separate from his presence. It is also separate from his power. Let's see Exodus 33 verses 12 to 20. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Now, before then, God had told Moses that his power, his angel, who that was carrying power of God, will go with Moses. Moses said, eh, eh, eh. I've been seeing your power. I've been manifesting your power. I, I'm not satisfied. I want your presence. God now said, okay, my presence will go with you. Now, let's continue where we stopped. And he said unto him, if your presence will not go with me, Carry us not up from here. 16. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech you, show me thy glory. You see, before now, Moses had seen the power of God. Moses had been in the presence of God, but he has not seen the glory of God. Showing us that the three, those interrelated, they can be separated. Moses had been going to the presence of God. He had been seeing the power, but he has never seen the glory of God. So he was asking God, that, show me your glory. Now, let's see what God told him. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see my face and live. You can't see the glory of God and live. It's not possible. That's what God is saying. Now, even after 
God offered Moses that my presence will go with you. Moses was asking for the glory of God. We've seen God can separate the three of them. God reveals that his glory is entirely on a different dimension and that you may have access to his power. You may come into his presence, but you cannot behold his glory except you qualify, except you are moved onto that third dimension. Now, this year, God wants to manifest more of his glory. But the question is, will I participate in the glory of God? Will you be able to participate in the glory of God? Will I just be a hearer alone? Will I just be a spectator alone? At the end of a football competition, it is only those who are the footballers in the winning team that participate in receiving the prize. They are supporters, no matter how noisy they are, no matter how visible, no matter how fanatic they are, they will not receive anything. I pray I and you we will not be a mere spectator. God will be showing forth his glory. God will be pouring forth his glory. He said his glory will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. He said many things will happen this year that will manifest his glory. But will you partake? Will I partake? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, Lord God Almighty, we thank you for bringing us into the year of your glory. Father, Lord God Almighty, we have seen that it's not everybody that can see your glory. It's not everyone that can, we can have your power. We can even come into your presence, but your glory is special. Father, we pray we will partake in that special dimension of you. That everyone listening to me, whatever it will take, whatever we have to do, help us, O oh Lord, to partake in your glory. Help us, O oh Lord, to take our place in the scheme of things you have for this year. Father, we thank you. Father, we magnify your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. See you again next week. Bye-bye.